Hello there future GCSE historians, it is Mrs Hamlin here and I am going to talk to you over the next few minutes about why GCSE history is the option that is most important for you to be taking. And in true Habe style, I will be kicking this off with a big question. So my big question for you is why take history at GCSE? So I'm going to approach this in two ways. I'm going to talk about why it's important to take GCSE history in general. And then I'm also going to deconstruct for you why he, GCSE history over the two year period at specifically Harris Academy Beckenham is a really important curriculum for you to be getting stuck into. So Firstly, before I get into my top three reasons for taking GCSE history in general, I would like you to have a look at the pictures behind the mind map. Now, all of these pictures are grouped and they're grouped according to our modules. So I want you to have a little look at them and see where you think the groups begin and end and what you think these modules might be. Okay, so I'm hoping you've spotted Elizabeth I in the top right hand corner. Now you've actually looked at Elizabeth I a little before. Elizabeth I was a queen who was in the middle of that religious roller coaster in the early modern period and who really tried to mediate the situation. There's an awful lot of drama around Elizabeth I and we will get stuck into that as one of our modules. In the top left hand corner, you can see Weimar and Nazi Germany. Now, these interwar years are something that you've just had a look at in year nine as part of our key stage three chronological journey. And you know that after World War One, there's a huge crash in Germany and how through this crash, there is a rise of an extremist ideology and a growth in the power of a man called Hitler. These are two modules that you have an inkling about already, but at the bottom are a couple of modules that you might recognise the images of, but not actually know too well. So in the bottom right hand corner here, you can see some black and white images. I'm specifically having a think about this one with the aeroplane. And this is actually a picture from the Berlin blockade of 1948, where these children are waving down a plane in the hope it might drop some parachutes and sweeties for them, um, as some of their planes did. And the Western Allies are dropping off supplies because Berlin has just been blockaded off by Stalin. This is part of our superpower relations module and exactly makes my point. If you have a look here, you can see right next to it, the Berlin Wall being constructed. My point is this, you probably recognise the idea about the Berlin Wall or you've heard of it before, but maybe you've not had the opportunity to really learn about why it went up or the significance of it coming down. And in the bottom left hand corner here, you can see our um, first module that we approach actually at the beginning of this GCSE course, which is my migrants in Britain. Um, so have a look at this picture here. We can see with the pink feathers um, just underneath one of my arrows. This is actually a photograph of the Notting Hill Carnival in the 20th century and both the Notting Hill Carnival and Claudia Jones, who is here in the circular image here, uh, its creator are a key focus for us in our Migrants in Britain module as we look at what the experience is of migrants in Britain but also what migration can bring to Britain and the fantastic booming culture we have as a result of migration in Britain. So there's a little taster of a few of the things that we will look at and now I'm going to talk to you more generally about why GCSE as an option without even thinking about our specific curriculum is a really important subject to take. So if you have a look at the green box here, depth of knowledge. Now, I would argue that to have a depth of knowledge in history is to have a depth of knowledge of the present and of the world. As you can see in your newspapers every day, magazines, your adverts, your telly, and the news every day that history happens every day. And in centuries to come, they'll learn about the histories of our present. So to have a depth of knowledge about history is to have a depth of knowledge about the world. There are so many things we see today that you can make tremendous links back through history to. So to have a knowledge of history is to have a depth of knowledge, full stop. The second reason why you should be taking history is because it is a highly respected subject. It's a really well-rounded subject and it links very well with my last reason. It really, really does give you a broad, um, ability to do all sorts of things which I'll come to when we look at key skills. So it's highly respected. 
Lots of your teachers will have um, GCSE history as a qualification, specifically your history teachers. Um, but journalists will, editors will, some doctors will, some lawyers will. Some of those who have grown their own businesses will. Why? Because the foundations of GCSE history make those jobs. This links to my last reason, key skills. During your GCSE history lessons, I will give you a contemporary piece of evidence and you'll analyse it for how much it illuminates for us about certain people's experiences or, or the typicality of certain experiences at different times or the political climate of places. You will look at contemporary evidence and you'll be able to tell me what that reveals about the time. You'd also prioritise different aspects of time and try and work out what the main cause is for something and and in that prioritization as a skill, you'll you'll probably do some research to be able to drag out your kind of key highlights of information to be able to work out what you truly think. And in all of this, you'll work out how to argue your case and debate, which of course is an extremely important skill for later life and lots of future careers. So a depth of knowledge, a well-respected subject. Why? Because of the key skills that it enables you to practice. So there you go, generally speaking, GCSE history is an extremely important subject for you to be taking. But like I said, more specifically, it's also an incredible two year course, specifically at Harris Academy Beckenham. So to give you a quick deconstruction of what it is that we'll be looking at, this is our paper one. Paper one is migrants in Britain from 800 until present. And this is a brand new topic for you. You'll be the first ones to go through this module as it's new to the Edexcel specification. And we've chosen to teach it here at Harris Academy Beckenham because we think it is absolutely fantastic. So you can see that this starts even before the Norman Conquest. And we're looking at reasons for migration and patterns of settlement, including things like the Vikings, the Normans, Jews and other European traders and craftsmen. We also think about what the context of, of European society is in the 800s. And we move through time and when we get to our present or 1900 till present in 20th century, we look at the world wars and the end of the British Empire and the development of the Commonwealth and the EU membership. And, and we think about the experiences of those people and those migrants in Britain and the relationship with the authorities and um, equal rights movements that happened, specifically the Race Relations Act in 1965 and, and the impact of certain events in Britain on these migrants. Importantly, like I spoke about at the beginning, we do a really close case study of someone that's fairly local to us, Notting Hill. And we look at the reasons for Caribbean migration to the area and the influence of Caribbean cultures on the area, we also look at racism and policing in the area and the Notting Hill riots of 1958. We think about what Britain is like after the Second World War and the demand for labour. And we think about migration and just how much it brought to Britain as a whole from 800 till present. And the idea here, as you can see in my little red box at the bottom, is because it is such a long period of time, we get to see how things change over time and how some certain experiences are similar and how some are different. And by looking at such a long period of time, you can really see some trends and patterns. And those are the sorts of things that you'll be commenting on. Paper two is split into two. And the first part of that is to do a period study of superpower relations. Like I said, there's lots of images here you'll probably recognize. Really important moments in our kind of most current history, really. The origins of the Cold War, a few major flash moments in the Cold War, and then the end of the Cold War from 1970 up until 1991. Really interesting moments of history here, like I said, the Berlin airlift, the Berlin Wall, um, we see the drop of the Manhattan Project um, in August 1945, just after the Second World War, which ends the war between the USA and Japan. There are obviously an awful lot of things that happen during this period of time. And as a result of that, most of what you're asked to comment on are the kind of consequences of certain events that happened and the significance of certain events that happened. 
this is the sort of time that you will be absolutely prioritizing different events against each other and working out what event was cataclysmic for the next period of time. Seriously important for us to get our tea stuck into. And as um, you'll have heard a lot of, there are tremendous links with some of our current climate at the moment. To be. This is our British depth study of early Elizabethan England. And you can see here in my big blue bubble, a medieval soap opera. Like I said, with Elizabeth I comes a lot of drama. This is a short narrative of time. We look at her, as you can see, her early reign, so from um, 1558 to 1588. And we see how she really tries to mediate the situation of the religious crisis in England. And we also see how she tries to mediate a situation when her distant cousin comes to England and has a real claim to the throne and she has to protect what she feels is hers. In this, we'll look at causes, Causation and significance, what's the most significant challenge posed to Elizabeth or, or why does Elizabeth feel like she has to have her cousin Mary Queen of Scots executed in 1587? This will ask us to have quite a lot of debate and, and ask us to start ranking certain events against each other to work out what the main cause of, say, the Spanish Armada in 1588 was. And that leads us to our last topic, Weimar and Nazi Germany. Paper three. Now, this is an interesting one because paper three is the only one where we have to discuss historical interpretations. Yes, here you are building on prior knowledge. So we need to make this even more complex now. And this is where one of our kind of key skills comes into play. In paper three, you'll be asked to look at two interpretations from two separate historians who have fair but very different opinions on some of the events that took place. All of their opinions will be right, interpretations will be fair, and they will all be based on valid evidence. But you'll need to decide which of these historians has a more credible point of view, and that is seriously important for the present day. Lots of interpretations get get given now. We hear lots of people's opinions and it's really important for us to decipher exactly which of those interpretations is credible and based on true and accurate information. This is an incredibly important topic both in its nature of its content and as I said you guys have just had a look at this at the rise of Hitler but it's also incredibly important because it teaches us these key skills, looking really critically at interpretations and opinions of others and working out just what makes them credible um, and how we can substantiate what is said by these people with our own knowledge. So to give you a flavour of some of the things and some of the skills that you would practice in history, I've built this for us. Now this is from one of our year 10 lessons, so you will study paper three in the second part of year 10. And the title here was, was it a fire that ignited the totalitarian power of Hitler? In this lesson, students had to rank what they felt was the key reason for Hitler becoming Fuhrer in 1934. To do this, one of the ways that we um, really embed our knowledge in history is by coming up with acronyms. So um, we have got wrecked here. Now, this isn't your typical way of spelling wrecked, but it sounds like the word wrecked. And it's easy for us as students to remember. OK, so Hitler became Fuhrer and wrecked Germany. Um, it's an easy way to remember it. So we've got R, E, K and D. So students would create a uh, acronym in their books and go through and look at oh, the Reichstag fire, the enabling act, Night of the Long Knives and Death of Hindenburg. Now I've used this because I know that you know some of these things already. You know that there is a there is a fire just after Hitler becomes Chancellor. You know that after this fire, Hitler uses an act to get rid of his opposing party, the Communist Party, to make sure that he doesn't really have too many enemies that can stop him from coming to power. He then consolidates this and makes sure that anybody in his party who is slightly suspicious of is also got rid of in the night of the long knives. But the constitution says that there is a man who is still above him, Hindenburg, the president. So 
The last thing to happen is that Hindenburg dies. With all these four things intact, Hitler is able to come Führer. But I would pose to my students, well, which is the, the real reason, which is the ultimate reason that led to Hitler becoming Führer? Students would then have to rank them in this triangle, picking their top three reasons and having to justify just which one they think is the ultimate reason. So already here, we've got so many different skills going on. You'd have looked at information about these four different moments of Hitler's journey to becoming Führer. And you'd have pulled out the key information and you'll be thinking about which one of these you could call the ultimate reason. Now, I've had students argue that all four of these are the ultimate reason that Hitler became Führer. Um, the Reichstag fire allows him to get rid of his biggest competitor, meaning that this whole situation is made a lot smoother for him to become Führer. So maybe that makes it the ultimate reason. The Enabling Act literally gave Hitler the power to change the constitution. If it wasn't for the Enabling Act going through, then Hitler couldn't have become Führer. But he's only allowed to bring in the Enabling Act because the Reichstag's just got on, gone up in flames. These are the sorts of discussions that we'd be having in the classroom. Yet, until Hindenburg's death, there is a man who stands above him the entire time. So surely none of these can be a real reason, the ultimate reason rather, until Hindenburg does die in, in 1934. Students will rank these and then have to argue in front of the class which one they think is the ultimate factor. So, I pose to you, have a little track back to when you did this in your nine and think about it. Can you tell me, can you come and find me or one of the history team and justify for us which one of these you think is the ultimate factor? And we will be highly impressed of our future history GCSE students. So I hope that's given you a little flavour of what it is like to be a GCSE historian um, and that you feel like you're more confident in what the curriculum will specifically be at Harris Academy Beckenham when you follow this journey through of uh, GCSE history and have taken away with you three key things about why history GCSE is generally such an important GCSE to be taking. Remember, highly respected, a depth of knowledge and some key skills about whatever future career you want, there will be something transferable in there for you. Thank you for listening to me um, whenever you are listening to me. Please come and find me or one of the history team if you have any further questions.